protein is not protein by what I've learned. Overall, I agree with what he says here, actually. Protein is not protein in terms of digestibility, absorbability. I've talked about this a lot here on this channel when it comes to eating a vegan diet and getting enough protein. And about halfway through the video, he does finally admit that you can get enough protein on a vegan diet. With the right knowledge and diligence, yes, you can meet your protein requirements on a vegetarian or vegan diet, but you need to make sure to pick the right proteins. Even still, there are a lot of problems with this video, and I think the ultimate message of this video is very unfortunate. I will say, to give him some credit, he does include his sources uh, along with a full transcript, which is very much appreciated. Unfortunately for him, uh, it, it ends up <laughs> hindering him more than helping if you actually go and look at his sources. In fact, one of the first references he makes is incorrect. Another March 2021 study looking at 187 Polish children found that children not eating meat, a high quality protein, were three centimeters shorter and had weaker bones. No, it did not. The very next sentence after the one he highlighted about bone mineral content states, the difference for vegetarians attenuated after accounting for body size. Attenuated means reduced, and the authors make it clear that the difference reduced to zero once controlling for body size for vegetarians. And the difference in height for vegetarians was not statistically significant. In other words, there was no meaningful difference in either height or bone density between kids who eat meat and kids who don't eat meat. Now, for vegans, it's a different story. Even after controlling for various factors, there remained a modest difference in height and bone density between vegans and omnivores, possibly suggesting some benefit from consuming, not specifically meat, as what I've learned contends, but some amount of animal products like eggs or milk, which presumably the vegetarian kids would be eating. But the story doesn't end there. As the authors note, and as you can clearly see in the supplemental material, the median intake of both calcium and vitamin D is significantly lower for vegan kids. These are two of the most important nutrients for bone health, and you can see here that for the vegetarian kids, intake of both of these is noticeably higher. Total protein intake is also significantly lower. Protein appears to be really important for bone health as well, particularly during adolescence. It looks as though the vegetarian kids consumed roughly the same amount, but as what I've learned rightly points out, certain animal products, including milk and eggs, have higher protein digestibility scores than virtually all plant foods. If the vegetarian kids were consuming significant amounts of milk and eggs, which seems likely given their worse cardiovascular risk profile and their significantly higher saturated fat and cholesterol intake when compared to the vegan kids, and if the vegan kids weren't consuming enough high quality vegan protein like soy, then amino acid intake would very likely be markedly better for the vegetarian kids despite having similar total protein intake. Bottom line, could these three factors, particularly lower intake of calcium and vitamin D, explain most if not all of the difference in height and bone mineral density between vegans and omnivores? Why would what I've learned, let's just call him Will, why would Will assume that it's meat consumption or even, you know, egg milk consumption without even bothering to mention obvious differences in specific nutrient intakes, nutrients that are very relevant to bone health. It's really hard for me not to just see this as pro-meat, pro-animal product, anti-vegan propaganda, particularly given the other videos he's put out <laughs> on this channel in the same vein, promoting animal products and denigrating veganism. It's also worth noting this is not the only study examining vegetarian children and height to come out in 2021. This one published in May, including 149 vegetarian and 115 vegan kids, found no difference in height when compared to omnivore children. Wonder why he neglected to mention it. I don't want to come across as flippant in regards to vegan diets for kids. Those familiar with me know I take nutrient deficiencies very seriously, particularly when it comes to kids. I've said numerous times on this channel, I personally am not comfortable with a lot of vegan parents feeding their children a vegan diet, since clearly many of them 
don't know what they're doing. I would advise against any parent from attempting to feed a child a vegan diet without guidance from a knowledgeable pediatrician, knowledgeable dietitian, specifically knowledgeable in vegan diets for kids, which I know is hard to find, but then just feed them vegetarian. When so many of the vegan resources for parents, for kids, don't even mention iodine, yeah, it, it makes me very uncomfortable. But I also don't think it's okay to present research like this as vegetarian kids are shorter anyway, moving on, or even vegan kids are shorter anyway, moving on. There's a lot of nuance here, a lot that could be explained by differing intakes of specific nutrients, and clearly a lot of benefits for vegan kids that frankly likely outweighs any reduction in height. Heart disease is the major killer in this country, uh, you know, aside from COVID right now, obviously, and atherosclerosis starts in childhood. So reducing that risk is a pretty huge deal. Not even bothering to mention that doesn't make it seem like he really cares that much about kids and kid health or American health in general. Again, it seems like his main agenda is promoting this pro-meat agenda and saying, hey, vegetarianism makes you shorter. It's a pretty easy way to do that. Recent research says the old 50 grams of protein a day recommendation was way too low and that a 62 kilogram or 135 pound person needs at least 75 to 100 grams of high quality protein per day. This is the study he's referencing. It's a study promoting high quality animal protein without a single mention of saturated fat, LDL, cholesterol, fiber. Not surprising once you read the conflicts of interest statement. You've got the National Dairy Council, Beef Association, Dairy Farmers of Canada, Beef Checkoff. Luckily for Will, this is not the only source to find benefits with protein consumptions above the RDA. Examine.com, which is one of my favorite sources for nutrition information, comes to basically the same conclusion. There are benefits not only for athletes, but sedentary folk as well, particularly if you're trying to lose weight, and those consuming all or mostly plants likely need more protein to make up for lower quality. What does more protein mean exactly? Most sources don't say. Will doesn't say either. He does mention this study on vegetarian and omnivore athletes. No mention of the tiny sample size, of course. They found the vegetarians' diets had a lower score of 89%. So they missed the lower end of their protein target by 10 grams and the upper end of the target by 22 grams of utilizable protein. Now, 89% is actually not bad, but as vegetarians, they would be eating high quality proteins like dairy or eggs. So if they were vegan, we would expect their overall protein to be a lot lower than than 89% utilizable. I love that he admits we don't know what the score would be for vegan athletes, but then just assumes that it would be a lot lower <laughs> anyway and drags the bar way, way lower. <laughs> Again, this study was tiny with no mention of the amount of milk, eggs, etc. that the 22 vegetarians were eating. When specific recommendations are made for vegan athletes, they tend to say aim for the high end. If we apply this to non-athletic vegans using Will Source, we get 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight per day. For a 140 pound adult, that's about 102 grams of protein. I personally eat about 100 grams of protein per day, but I don't think that's the norm, especially when we're talking about vegan women. This is likely substantially higher than most vegan women consume, which is really not surprising given the recipes and meal plans promoted to vegans, particularly here on YouTube. Even seemingly good resources run by dietitians like Pick Up Limes, I think fall short in her most recent must-try vegan lunch ideas. She offers a pasta salad with 19 grams of protein per 640 calories, so not great. She does offer this sushi sandwich thing with 10 grams of protein. She serves it with edamame, which is an excellent source of protein, but then she follows that up with this chickpea Caesar wrap that has 28 grams of protein, great, and 794 calories, and that does not include the chips on the side. Now you could be having one of these lunches with a super protein-packed smoothie in the morning. It's basically what I do every single morning. 
or more likely you're having something like one of these oatmeals from her previous video that averaged only 15 grams of protein. I don't think this is too concerning for just, you know, your, your average vegan woman, assuming you're eating, you know, around 70 grams of protein. I would be more concerned if you're getting like the 50 grams of protein. <laughs> that's, that's really uh, limiting yourself. But again, we're talking about optimal protein intake. No one is saying that you're eating, if you're eating 70 grams of protein on a vegan diet, that you're protein deficient. But what does concern me is that many of these vegan women could become pregnant and you know what you need more of when you're pregnant? Protein. If you're regularly consuming 60 to 70 grams of protein per day, it's probably going to be really hard to increase that by 40, 50 grams per day for an you know, optimal healthy pregnancy, especially when you're dealing with food aversions and nausea and all that shit. Bottom line, and this is something that many vegans just will not accept, but there is no downside to eating more protein from plants, assuming you're not just eating a bunch of, I don't know, like fried soy dogs or something like that, right? Assuming you're eating like mostly healthy protein sources, there's no downside. And many upsides, including that many plant protein sources are also higher in other nutrients that we could be lacking, like iron and zinc. I really think vegan educators need to do a better job advocating for and speaking directly about protein and promoting recipes and meals that have like 25 to 30 grams of protein. Instead of instructing people not to worry about numbers and just to nourish the cells and the soul, really? Remember, veganism has a retention problem. <laughs> Most people who go vegan don't stay vegan. And some of the reasons for that said by ex-vegans is that they didn't feel satisfied. You know what's very satisfying? Protein. Maybe if we should start encouraging more protein and actually paying attention to how much protein we're getting. Anyway, Will goes on to criticize a short section of the Game Changers where narrator James Wilk says, one cup of cooked lentils or a peanut butter sandwich has about as much protein as three ounces of beef or three large eggs. What I've learned rightfully brings up that it's not that simple, given, again, differences in digestibilities between different foods. I brought up roughly the same criticism in my like 30 minute <laughs> critique of the video. Oh, my little baby hairs. Postpartum hair loss, man. It's a bitch. One cup of cooked lentils weighs seven ounces. That's more than double the weight of the steak. Not surprising. Plant foods have more water generally, more fiber. They are bulkier foods, which is a good thing, right? It's a healthy thing. We want fiber in our diet. But again, if you are trying to maximize strength and you're trying to get a crap ton of protein and calories, it's going to make things a little bit more difficult. Unless you're eating a lot of soy protein, you know, a lot of uh, protein shakes, right? Uh, you're going to have to eat a lot more food to get the same amount of protein. Again, this is absolutely doable. I just don't think that the movie adequately portrays the reality regarding plant protein. That it's slightly too dramatically inferior depending on the specific food and that vegans have to consume slightly too dramatically more of it depending on our activity level and our goals. Unsurprisingly, Will fails to mention any of the benefits of consuming plant protein versus animal protein. He even shows this ridiculous comparison, peanut butter sandwich, lentils and edamame versus just steak and eggs as a way to like prove the inferiority of plant protein. Side note, I do appreciate that both meals are ridiculous. In fact, I think the peanut butter sandwich plus a cup of lentils plus half a cup of edamame <laughs> is more appetizing looking than this like gray steak and I don't even know what's going on with those eggs. Oh my god, somebody teach this boy how to cook. Anyway, there's no mention of saturated fat, no mention of cholesterol, which not everyone needs to worry about dietary cholesterol, but there are high responders and it's not necessarily easy to know if you're one of those people whose blood cholesterol levels rise with higher intakes of cholesterol. So it's probably prudent for everyone to limit cholesterol consumption, which if you're limiting saturated fat, 
you're already doing. Again, heart disease is bad, guys. No mention of the lack of fiber with this animal-only meal. No mention of all the fiber you get from the plant meal, the antioxidants, the folate, vitamin K, iron, magnesium, manganese, potassium, healthy fats. There's a reason virtually all health organizations promote plant protein and promote eating more protein from plants. This is what I'm talking about when I talk about having an agenda, only talking about pros of animal products and not the cons. In fact, defending those cons in other videos saying saturated fat is fine, actually. Just to be clear, having an agenda on its own is not an issue, just like having, you know, conflict of interest on its own is not an issue. I clearly have an agenda, veganism, like I want everyone watching to go vegan or at least restrict animal product consumption because I believe it's wrong to harm and kill sentient beings for food when we clearly don't need to do so. But as I've proven time and time again on this channel with, you know, criticisms of game changers, what the health seaspiracy, and like numerous vegan YouTubers and advocates, having that goal of animal liberation does not mean just going along with anything and everything any vegan says. It does not mean promoting veganism at all costs. It does not mean pushing any potential problems under the rug in order to promote a vegan diet as the healthiest, best diet ever. I don't think the same can be said for what I've learned. He promotes animal product consumption despite the clear risks. He omits pertinent information when it doesn't align with his narrative, and he cites only the studies he likes and half the time seems to barely read beyond the headline. Again, about halfway through the video, he does admit that you can get enough protein on a vegan diet. With the right knowledge and diligence, yes, you can meet your protein requirements on a vegetarian or vegan diet. Which then leads to the most important point that, of course, he's never going to admit, which is that we can get enough protein without supporting this. By choosing this, you're saying animal suffering and death is worth you getting a little extra protein or getting the same amount of protein with slightly less effort. If you think that's fine, I mean, I, at least you admit it, that's good. <laughs> I think it's a very selfish, short-sighted view that obviously I don't agree with, and I don't think most people agree with it either. I don't believe most people truly think that a little more convenience is more important than animal lives, particularly when those animals suffer greatly before death. But people like Will don't put it in those terms. They don't talk about the significant costs of eating this high quality animal protein. And that's a shame because I think we're better than that. I think we're more altruistic and less self-absorbed than that. <laughs> I think we can make the little extra effort to meet our needs to get enough protein without exploiting animals. But hopefully one day in the not too distant future, we'll have clean meat and then and then what? <laughs> I mean, they'll still complain, right? I'm sure they'll still complain that it's man-made and not natural, and so it can't be as healthy as good old grass-fed beef or whatever. I think there will always be those people who really are just like dyed-in-the-wool anti-vegan, but the vast majority of people are not, and if given the option between meat and clean meat, animal-free, cruelty-free meat, vast majority of people will pick that meat as long as it's not like 30 times as expensive. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, click the bell if you want to be notified when I upload. Uh, thank you so much to patrons over at patreon.com slash unnatural vegan. I do post two exclusive videos a month there for $5 plus patrons. Probably a few of you wondering about the Twitch account. I don't know when I'll be streaming on Twitch again, unfortunately, <laughs> just with my back doing it at night like I was doing. Uh, was not really working for me. I started getting back pain again because at night typically that's when I'm just laying down watching TV. I'm not sitting at all and I think that makes a difference. So now having to sit obviously at the computer is not great and I would like to do it in the morning but then that cuts into work time <laughs> for this channel which is not great either. So for now I think I'm gonna have to shelve the, the twitching, the streaming. 
But thank you to everyone who went over there and supported me and had fun and even gave me some money, some subscriptions. That's awesome for the two months or so that I, oh man, that I did it. I appreciate it. Uh, anyway, new video soon.